Finally tonight, uh, if I can squeeze it in under the wire, we'll go to Real America's Voice. You're watching House Parks Mega Worldwide. Um, the only the only show that plays these clips all the way through as a point of pride, even when they're annoying and boring and it's the same shit sometimes. But, you know, they're going to keep lying. We're going to keep knocking them down. It's, a, it's basically a bullshit talking point whack-a-mole is what I do for a living now. Um, and... Nothing, I think, is clear about that than the quote-unquote uh, FBI whistleblowers. Hashtag, air quotes, whistleblowers. The FBI apparatchik of entrenched power. Man, I, I love when people try to concoct. This is That's the apparatchik of entrenched power. That's almost as good as when people take a word about something they hate and attach it to industrial complex. Um... <laughs> So here we go. This is uh, uh, this guy, John Fredericks, host of Outside the Beltway. And he's got, uh, what's his name? The, the, one of the FBI whistleblowers, or maybe two of them. We'll see. Okay. What exactly is going on right now in the FBI, Steve? Yeah, Steve. Tell us, Steve Friend, right? Tell us what's going on. Obviously, you're in front of a, one of those uh, wood American flag sculptures that is necessary if you're going to have a right-wing podcast that you do out of your garage when your wife's not home or you're uh recording your manifesto before you go post your friend well i think it's a combination of uh of a historical misinterpretation of what the fbi actually stands for and uh the federal bureau of investigation how it's evolved now from from a law enforcement agency to a domestic intelligence agency, and, and finally, fr uh, fr how it's... Well, technically speaking, um, the courts, the DOJ in this particular case, enforces the law. The FBI investigates it and presents the case. They are technically not law enforcement. As a matter of fact, it's one of the reasons why they take the U.S. Marshals with them, which is a law enforcement arm, and oftentimes they're the ones who do a lot of the arresting and stuff just saying you guys are supposed to look at the evidence collect it and and make a case why there is a case in this particular they could you certainly can arrest people but you're an investigative body develop these metric systems or well you were part of one before they kicked you out for refusing to be part of an investigative body systems, essentially setting quotas for itself to achieve so to go back to my first point i think everybody historically has looked yes uh uh, they set an awful quota, like, catch all the criminals we can. And since we don't know how many criminals there are, but we can statistically expect that there's this amount, we should at least be showing that we're catching and clearing cases at this level. You know, like fucking adults. The FBI is an objective force for good in a constitutional, constitutionally grounded organization. And I don't think that's true. I think its history in the 30s, 40s, and 50s was anti-communist, and everybody just perceived that to be pro-American. And that's not, in effect, true. It's really just maintaining the status quo. And as... Well, I mean, and did you think the status quo was uh, communism? Or, or do you just think we should have been, and you're mad about that? Or... Because if you are, I think the Real America's Voice people are going to be very upset that they platformed you. The status quo within our ruling elite has shifted further and further. To By the way, the status uh, quo in the United States is a constitutional republic where we choose our leaders through democratic means. That's the status quo. We have an established government with three co-equal branches. Um, we have uh, elections on the regular to make sure that we... Uh, can change those seats at you know at the whim of the voter in a reasonable time space that's the status quo if there's corruption during a period or or not or a particular organization is run by someone like say j edgar hoover for a while who wants to turn the thing into his own you know enforcement bureau that that's not the status quo. That's someone using the status quo to mask other activities. To the left, the FBI now stands as a as an apparatchik of that of the entrenched power. Now Well, the the establishment of the rule of law in the country, yeah. Yeah, I would I would like them to be an established organization that isn't have they don't have to jump start themselves every time there's a new fucking case I would take us into the mission creep that's happened since September 11th and the, the FBI has evolved from counterterrorism 
the mission creep. What do you mean, looking for terrorists? Because terrorists operate, they, they commit federal crimes and operate across state lines? To, from threats abroad to looking into the interior as our military has been successful at eradicating the, the threats in the Middle East. Uh, the yeah, but if they aren't and any of those folks get over here, uh, CIA operates outside, FBI inside, military can police, uh, you know, can operate as a, you know, as a force outside the country, but you can't police the country with military forces. Hence the, never mind. The FBI has to justify its existence. It's a self-licking ice cream cone. And it it's a, the FBI is a self-licking ice cream cone, according to, uh, I'm, mm hmm. What do you think? Timothy McVeigh's third cousin? Has to look into internally at, uh, at the threats. And, and finally, within the last 10 years, this uh, integrated program management that I was trying to highlight at the hearing a couple of weeks ago, where the FBI sets metrics for itself to achieve. And if you ask for anything in the government and attach dollars and cents to it, you will get more of it. And that's why they've seen some inflated statistics. And it's giving a misperception of a domestic terrorist threat in America that just frankly isn't true. Um, frankly, it is true. January 6th was a real thing. Thousands of people were there. Hundreds have been charged, but hundreds more um, still should and can be charged. Secondly, um, anybody who kills large groups of people, any of these shooters that go into an office space or anywhere around and shoots for political or social reasons qualifies as domestic terrorism. We've, we've had hundreds of these fucking things. And if the FBI at some point can... He can catch people who perhaps after they do these things when there's a suspect at large and they're the they're the apparatus for catching somebody who goes across state lines. They we need them for that so that they can't cross state lines, be out of the jurisdiction of the local police and then just blow up the next fucking building or shoot up the next fucking synagogue or walk into the next grocery store that's largely frequented by minorities What is their objective with this? It, it, you're asking the wrong dude. He he dropped out because he doesn't like it. Well, again, it's a, probably a combination of a couple things. I think there are some true believers, especially among the the ruling class in Washington D.C. Those folks, their entire careers are are hell bent on uh, climbing every rung, and as you climb one rung, there's fewer and fewer slots available. So they, yeah, that's not a true believer. That's that. Yeah, that's like hypergamy. That's uh, it's hierarchical gain saying it's it's the Peter principle. They tend to toe the party line and say what they have to say to, to please the uppers. Then then they're not true believers. True believers are the opposite. Arguably, you would be making the case that you're a true believer and what and you are. Because of that, you are you cannot integrate with the FBI as it stands because they aren't true to the mission. And so ultimately, this guy, the main reason he seems to have been kicked to the curb is because he's stupid. And they have to always make that uh, that pilgrimage back to Washington, D.C. And you can't help but through osmosis become corrupted by the swamp. And yeah, that, yes, you can. Uh, yeah, you can. That's just fucking dumb. Apparently, he's magically immune to it, but the rest of you fucking sucks. Uh, if you even get near it for very long, you're just, you dough-headed bastards are going to get sucked into swamp thought. And on top of that, there's a financial incentive. You know, uh, beyond just the, uh, the promoting and making more money because of your promotion, hitting quotas and hitting these metrics, they're attached to, uh, there's bonuses attached to that. So being gold and hitting the check marks for a number of cases opens and arrests achieved and wiretaps uh, initiated, there's five figure bonuses for senior executive service members. So it's a perverse incentive and they push. Yeah, that's not just for opening cases. You have to close the fucking things. If you, if believe me, if, if anybody in the uppers on any of these district offices of the FBI or any of the main dudes in Washington, if they were known for just opening random uh, cases on people that never turned out to be worth a goddamn, you think they would A, keep their position and B, get any kind of fucking bonus? Are you nuts? On the rank and file to achieve that because they want to pad their own pocketbooks. 
Okay, so... Okay, so... That's absurd, but, uh... Do you see the bridge behind me? But they, they have to have an end game here, right? So when you say, you know, they're, uh, they're performing these duties at the, uh, at the behest of senior leadership, what is senior leadership's goal here? I mean, you know, when I grew up, the... Ep- Total aut- autonomous Federal Bureau of Investigative Industrial Complex control. FBI was an institution to, you know, protect our shores, to root out wrongdoing to get rid of mafia people and and uh, evil doers and things of that nature yeah and they still do uh now they're just going after you know people going to a school board meeting no they are not so i mean there has got to be an ab- i mean again hold for a second think about what that guy just fucking said listen listen to this this guy leadership's goal here i mean you know when i grew up the fbi was an institution to you know, protect our shores, to root out wrongdoing, to get rid of mafia people and and uh, evil doers and things of that nature. Uh, now they're just going after you know, people going to a school board meeting. Now that that's that's what this fuckhead thinks the FBI does all day every day. For real. And now I I know this dude's full of shit, but this guy's. He actually kind of look seems like he believes this. This guy was the former FBI, and I think he was on loan, former cop. And they make you a, you know, it, it, they they you get your classification because you've been in other law enforcement instead of going through the you know the actual FBI academy. And during the Trump years, a bunch of these like right wing wannabe cops wanted to get in the FBI and help weasel in there to help Donald Trump. And this guy was one of them. But this fuckhead. Can you imagine what an idiot you would have to be to think that the FBI has just given up on serial killers and drug smugglers and and mafia and and organized crime and human trafficking and child pornographers and all that shit. They've just given up on it entirely and now they just go harass parents at school board meetings. Something, by the way, they have not ever done. So, I mean, there's got to be Yes, this guy paid cash. Uh, cash Patel paid this guy's bills along with the other guy. Obje- there's there's got to be at, on the fourth floor, whatever that floor is, you know, there's got to be a goal in mind. Like, what is it that they want to achieve here? I mean, I get the incentives. I get the money. But those are all put in place by somebody on the fourth floor. So what's their end game? What do they the, what do they want the outcome to be? Obviously, to turn everyone gay, I think is pretty much right. Yeah, it's just a big, it's a big. The FBI is now uh, in charge of the gay agenda. They've uh, um, AOC has regular meetings over there with uh, activists um, from all across the country, and they just uh, bring them into the basement and they have conversations about how the FBI is supposed to work on the big gay ray. And uh, and of course, uh, the problem they have, of course, is it runs on solar. And um, they really want to use it at night. So they're working on battery technology, but they've got to keep Elon Musk out of the loop. Otherwise, he'll blab to everybody. So, yeah. Com- well, it's communism? A, it, it, what? What? It's total the, total it's the, control? Stasi? What is it? I think you hit it you know, on the head in the last one. Uh, it's the seventh floor. And uh, the, the nature of the FBI having shifted from law enforcement to domestic intelligence, uh, I think you th- when you look at a law enforcement investigation, it's very linear in its structure. There's a beginning and a, uh, an initiation, uh, an event that happens that has to be investigated. You do the investigation, and then it comes to a resolution. And whether or not that uh, ends in a conviction of a, of a criminal or not, uh, that's up to the justice. Yeah, slow down. A lot of us are having a hard time processing this if we've never seen a law and order episode system. But as the FBI has evolved into an intelligence organization, those investigations are circular in nature. So you initiate an investigation. Yes, they investigate themselves. It's a, uh, yeah, they're the ROM, they're the, well. To gain intelligence. What does that give you? More intelligence. And you gain more intelligence. Yes, that's the great thing. I ask myself questions and I just make up answers to questions I don't know and I become smarter. Because intelligence 
intelligence always leads to more intelligence, especially when you, you, you don't go outside your own knowledge base. Intelligence to gain more intelligence, and then you spin other investigations off of that that never come to an end. And that's how you get these, these cases that go for decades on end, and there's really no resolution to them. And the FBI still is able to check boxes for itself and say that it's successful because it's able to initiate these investigations, gain this information on the American people. And back to my original... All right, this asshole's trying to be like the your local Snowden. Initial point where uh, I'm arguing that the FBI in itself is sort of an a constitutional organization. Yeah, that's stupid, and it's obviously not. It's preserving the status quo by helping to tamp down the politically troublesome mindset that uh, the, the powers that be are uh, view, which is at this. Again, uh, how would it tamp down a political mindset? Do they, I, I mean, they raise, they have a special brain ray that makes you think different thoughts. Point in time is going to be conservative America, people who are pro. Okay, so they used to do it against liberals. Now they're doing it against conservatives. But the idea is that is to maintain whatever status quo, quo, status quo is actually happening. Not quo. Status quo is, uh, the, is what I text people when I'm watching the crow and I don't want to be disturbed. Second Amendment, pro-border sovereignty, pro-life, pro-traditional marriage, and that's why you end up with a radical traditional Catholic memo that's drafted in the Richmond field office that is targeting this, uh, these parishes for infiltration and potential uh, human source uh, recruitment. All right, uh, I don't know which uh, memo he's talking about, but so you have radical Catholics, um, are for all of the things that he's alleging the FBI is there to destroy now. Oh, that was the end of it. What did in the Richmond field office that is targeting this, uh, these parishes for infiltration and potential uh, human source uh, recruitment. Okay, so they're trying to recruit hardcore Catholics to inform on... Jesus. Um, hold on. Let's say, okay, Richmond. Whoops. Uh, f field office, a Catholic memo, something. FBI says internal Richmond memo on Catholics fails to what? Meet agencies exacting standards. Hold on. Somebody. So let's see. Bishop goes to statement following leaked internal. Okay, Virginia leaders respond to leaked FBI Richmond memo. Um, where is the actual one? Virginia leaders condemn anti-Catholic internal FBI memo. This is the what they're talking. Okay, the publication would appear to be an internal FBI memorandum targeting, if I may, and let me shrink this down, and we'll we'll end with this. We'll do a little uh, educational time if we can together. I think it's a good idea. Um, the memo dated January twenty third, entitled "Interests of Racially or Ethnically Motivated Violent Extremists in Radical Traditional Catholic Ideology," almost certainly presents new mitigation opportunities. It was produced by the bureau's Richmond office. It was published online February eighth by under, uh, UncoverDC.com with portions redacted. The document expressed with high confidence that the FBI Richmond office has quote increasingly observed interest from violent extremists in radical traditionalist Catholic ideology. It included criteria for distinguishing radical traditional Catholics from traditional Catholics who prefer the traditional Latin mass and from overall Roman Catholic adherents. In the same way that uh, Biden, when he brings up Republicans, separates maggots out from the rest of them. Okay. Um, suggests the Bureau pursue the development of sources in Catholic parishes and social media websites to help identify those promoting violence. Okay. I see. So they're, they're not interested in, uh, they don't think reg overall Roman Catholic adherents or traditional Catholics who prefer the Latin mass are a problem, but they know that there might be some people in there that are promoting violence and they want to nip it in the bud in a way that, by the way, if this was, uh, Islamic terror, these motherfuckers would be going, why aren't they getting people in there? Why don't we have human intel? It should be troubling and offensive to all communities of faith, as well as to Americans, said Bishop Burbridge, 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 in, uh, February 23rd episode of Walk Humbly podcast. 
of the Walk Humbly podcast. He said he was surprised by the reference to the Priests Fraternity of St. Peter, a religious order that celebrates the traditional form of the Mass. And for the faithful, yes, the reference was, don't worry about those guys. Because the way you worship or live to practice your faith and be labeled as an extremist and to threaten society is outrageous. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's the criminal. He's going to kill you. He's a murderous terrorist. Look at everybody. He said the magic word. It's outrageous. Outrageous. There it is. Outrageous. Anytime somebody throws outrageous around there, they're like, oops, uh, it's an admission of guilt. Okay. It was good to see the FBI correct the error by removing the memo, but I think they should have gone much further and apologized. My hope is that it was a lone agent's grievous error in judgment, not evidence of what a larger group of the Justice Department thinks of Catholics. It isn't if you fucking read it, because they're saying, by and large, this has nothing to do with regular order Catholics, even people who prefer the Latin mass over an English language mass or a Spanish language mass or any of that shit. They're talking about a very specific, distinct, they're not even just saying Opus Dei is a bunch of Da Vinci Code freaks. They're saying this one particular strain that, that other people are trying to infiltrate it and take it over. And you might want to be aware of that. This is so fucking stupid. It's like, it, it's like people getting offended. It's like Christians getting offended at people um, being concerned about David Koresh. He was alarmed to read the reports of the internal. The leaked document should be troubling and offensive to all communities of faith as well as all Americans. Our faith and our church instruct us to be a people of peace and uphold human dignity. We do not condone violence. Yes, they know. Um, their concern is, is that some people do condone violence and they think they might be able to find some fertile ground around you, especially in the pro-life movement, to do some Tiller the Baby Killer shooting. That's what concerns them. And they have a right to get concerned because that's exactly where they get those people from. I call on all national representatives from the Commonwealth of Virginia and the House and Senate to exercise a role of oversight, publicly condemn this threat to religious liberty, and to ensure there is no threat to religious liberty in this. You do not have the religious liberty to carry out violence against your fellow citizens. You don't. You don't. That is not part of religious liberty in the United States. You can do a whole bunch of crazy shit to yourself up to a certain limit um, around your religion. You can also interact with other people of your religion who will let you do stuff to them and them do stuff to you up to a certain limit and certainly age range uh, should play a part. But if you are threatening violence, that, that moves right out of religious liberty to bullshit politics. It's just, it's political violence. The memo targets Catholics as poten potential threats due to their religious beliefs. No, it does not. Anti-Catholic bigotry appears to be festering in the FBI and the Bureau is treating Catholics as potential terrorists because of their beliefs. No, they are not. All right, where's, uh, the story has been updated. Um... In a statement, they disavowed the document, pulled it from internal circulation, saying it failed to meet the agency's standards. Okay, they just it needed to be clarified. These are the other ones. Uh, um, where's the? I need the text of this thing. Okay, here it is. Uh, dear sir, ma'am, this letter is to request in accordance with the Freedom of Information Act. Okay, this is the they got this one. Uh, according to shocking media reports, this is the thing. Uh, records requested, and then uh, let's see. Please contact the undersigned to clarification. That's it. Okay, that's the that's the request for it. I don't know. Uh, yep. They have the actual document. Where is it? FBI is under scrutiny. Blah 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 blah. Sign up for the AMS, blah, blah, blah. Charlie Kirk and Turning Point USA said, oh yeah, Turning Point USA, aren't they the ones that have a uh, convicted pedophile as their as one of their big um, donors? Uh, let's see, using his FBI. <laughs> Apparently devout Catholic, Joe Biden is using his FBI to target Catholics. Wow. Yeah, Ronnie Jackson. Fuck off. Post the, uh, Newsweek has contacted the other Where's the memo? Where do they have the? T Can we post the fucking? Ep All right. It annoys me when I can't find the actual document. Um, secondly, hold on. Um, yeah. Uh, 
Um, yeah, th- th- uh, this guy right here. Charlie Kirk's uh, Turning Point partners with registered sex offender. Bergstrand served time for attempted coercion and enticement after trying to persuade a minor female to engage in sexual activity. And now he wants to be around uh, a conservative youth organization uh, around high schools and college campuses. He wants to be a donor to it so he can show up uninvited to all kinds of gatherings. What could possibly go wrong? Far-right extremist radio chat show host and Turning Point USA CEO Charles J. Kirk, in statements he made this week at TPUSA's second annual Pastor Summit, told attendees that conservatives and others need to boycott Target for their support for grooming kids. Kirk also attacked Target. One of TPUSA's summit corporate sponsors was Sean Berkstrand, a current CEO of Bismarck-based Right Side Up Apparel, uh, who is also a registered sex offender in North Dakota, Rolling Stone magazine reported. Um, there it is. Uh, Kirk's condemnation of the, uh, let's see, uh, they, they, they went out there. Yeah, delivering the fever message about morality and child care, but uh, Rolling Stone has learned that one of TPUSA's Summit corporate sponsors, uh, is a Christian fashion company that is led by a registered sex offender, Sean Bergstrand, who served time in federal prison for attempted coercion and enticement after trying to persuade a minor female to engage in sexual activity. Um, he's, uh, they were like, uh, that TPUSA Faith, quote, was not aware of this incident, but emphasized as an exhibit sponsor, uh, Bergstrand was not a speaker, organizer, or professing doctrine from the stage. No, 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 I'm, I'm sure he was quite happy behind the scenes. One of the core tenets of the Christian faith is forgiveness rooted in repentance. Uh, yeah, agreed. Um, but also, uh, you know, I would say... Fear a uh, wolf in sheep's clothing. Um, uh, you know, trust in God and tie up your camel, as it were. After discussing the issue with him, we believe it was critical to bring him to faith. I see. So he was, you guys talked him into uh, pretending to be a Christian so that he could sell, uh, be around underage models when they photograph their clothing line. I'm starting to barf. And uh, like emotionally, psychically, I'm barfing right now. Um Will not toss away any repentant, decent person because of a mistake that happened over a decade before. Okay, uh, this wasn't a mistake. He didn't think she was 30. That's not a mistake. That's an active choice by a grown fucking man. It's like, I, that bugs me the same way people go, it was really unfortunate. Yes, the, what, what was said was really unfortunate. What, like the words fell out of your fucking mouth? Like somebody bumped your jaw and you just accidentally said something awful? That was, infor- that was those, refer- those were very unfortunate remarks. You mean the stuff he meant to say and said? Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Well, he uh, created hell, though, I would just say. In case he needs it. In uh, today's conservative movement, nothing animates activists like supposed liberal indoctrination children the religious right. In particular, espouses unhinged rhetoric about how youth are being groomed into trans and LGBTQ ideology by Luciferian leftists. But, uh, you know, this guy's... Uh, first of all, it's not my turning point, or the Lord's turning point. I am a Christian and nationalist, but most importantly, I'm a Christian, I guess. Um, right side up, a Christian lifestyle apparel company that sews tags that... Say, uh, B-S-I-T-L, be strong in the Lord. Tell that to your seams. Um, into his t-shirts and other clothing companies, websites. Go, we all have a life story, and it doesn't matter where we've been. It matters where we're going that counts. Yes. And if there's any sense of uh, post-life justice, I would pack light. Um the company CEO Bergman had a prison conviction in his life story. He's a registered sex offender in North Dakota. A designation that the state's registry indicates will remain active until 2030. There we go. North Dakota sex offender registry. That's the dude wearing the logo for his company. Here's several uh, uh, pictures of him. Uh, I guess these are pictures that were that he took at his computer or in the police station. Um. He's uh, 40, 
42. Yeah. 6'2", 235 pounds. He's the same size as Trump, only lighter and taller. Um, risk level low. Well, that's nice. Um, there's his address. That's not good. I don't need to dox anybody. This, co this attempted coercion enticement is a 12 months, one day, credit for time served, five-year supervised release. Qualifying offense information. Okay, that's uh, that's the dude. Well, I think that uh, that just about settles it, kids. Um, thank you for being here. Um, I've got to go get in a car and drive to Los Angeles. Um, and what a shot. By the way, that guy, the uh, Talking Points USA booster, the donor, the guy who's helping Charlie Kirk get his message out, um, a registered sex offender who tried to have sex with a, a child, um, that guy um, he is uh, not a drag queen. In, in As far as we know, never, never done drag, never has been. Just... Just reminding 